to make accessing the cover for the engine easier, I'm going to take this seat out. It's very easy. Four 18 millimeter bolts. Some of them will have a little cover like this, which we'll have to remove in a second. And some won't, such as this one at the front here. You can see the nut will be exposed down there. So let's go ahead and unthread it. There's one on each corner, so we'll just go around and remove them all. Nut number two. On the back side, let's pull these caps off, and that'll expose the two rear nuts. Last one. Now I'm just gonna lift the seat up, pull it out of here, tilt it back. And there's wiring attached, but I'm not gonna disconnect it. I'm just gonna leave it as is. I went ahead and did the same thing to the passenger side so I can have both areas clear to pull the doghouse off. And on both sides, uh, on the driver's side, it's next to the gas pedal. On the other side, it's, well, the opposite. On the other side, it's, well, in the same area, just on the other side. Lift this flap up, and that's going to unlock the latch for the doghouse. The next thing I want to do is remove this knee panel. It's held on by two 10 millimeter bolts, one over here, one over here, and the rest is just push clips. So once those are out, we'll pop it off. straight out. Take down the kick panel here, the knee panel, two 10 millimeter bolts. There's one. There's the second one. And at this point you can just pull straight out on it. it from the side, pull straight out, okay. Underneath the center console slash cup holder, uh, there are uh, two more clips that we have to undo. I have a panel here that's missing, it's like a little pocket. Either way, open that up and there's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts right behind it. Remove both. There are two more up top. Now this entire unit can be removed and it will expose these two clips. This one's already loose, that's nice. So is this one. And now you can lift this up, pull it out. Pull straight back as you lift up and there you go. You have access to the backside of your engine. From underneath the car, you can see the mounting bolts and nuts that hold the manifold onto the pipe. There are three of them. One is over here on this side. You can't see it. I'll show you that in a second. But let's start by removing these two. These should be 15 millimeter nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some heat to this nut here. Hopefully the heat will help break it free. Unfortunately, the angle that it's at, it's facing right at the pipe. So anything other than a swivel is not going to fit on here. And the swivel usually kills torque. So unfortunately, we're going to have to keep using the swivel and hopefully the heat will help us break this free. When you heat this up, try to heat up the nut, not the stud or anything else. You want to expand the metal, heat expands metal and heating up the nut will hopefully expand it to where it breaks free. Got it. There we go.
over here you can see the exhaust manifold and the spark plug wires are going to be in our way so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect those to unplug the spark plug wires simply pull out on them they might be stuck usually they get stuck from heat you can give them a little wiggle a little twist and if you just pry on them they should pop off sometimes this is a risky move because you can actually break the rubber on the wire but sometimes it helps to get a pair of pliers and use that to pry off gives you more leverage there we go i'm just going to unplug them off of the coils as well just set those aside that way they're completely out of our way so if you do the plier trick just be gentle and careful uh, the last one or i guess that would be the first one you can get from inside the fender well unless you can reach it from here uh, coolant temperature sensor is also located over there by the first spark plug unfortunately mine is broken so I uh, can't show you how to unplug it but basically just unplug it I have a suspicion that it broke when this manifold was replaced last time because this is not the original manifold it already has two broken studs which I can show you how to extract once we get to that point because most likely at least one is going to break unfortunately unless you're lucky and it doesn't but either way you're going to have to do some fixing so for me i only have four bolts remaining holding this manifold on there should be six in total a uh, bolt is broken here which is now a little nub a stud coming out of the head and the first one over there so we're going to have to fix those but let's get a socket and get all these out so with a 10 millimeter socket, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these bolts. Okay, clearly that's too tight for a 3 8 ratchet. So let's break out the half inch ratchet, see if more leverage will do the trick. It's turning. This one's free, that's good. There's one, let's see if we can get these over here. Okay, that one's broken free. Okay. Can I fit this ratchet, okay. Okay, so this one broke free with the small 3 8 ratchet, that's fine. Sometimes you need more leverage. So let's just get all these out. Okay, so that's all the bolts that are holding my manifold on. Some engines will have an EGR port right on this cylinder over here. The new manifold you'll see will have the port, but it comes with a block off plate because just like in our case here, we don't have EGR. So you'll need that block off plate. I'll show you how to install all that. But as for this manifold, it's all free, ready to go. So basically we have to pull it out because if you remember, it has studs on the bottom going into this pipe. So we have to pull it up, out, and then it's gonna come out through the bottom, not through here. Obviously it's never gonna fit here. So. up like this send it down and let's go underneath and pull it out I'm gonna take the gasket off while I'm at it you can reuse these gaskets by the way the multi-layer steel ones um, which I will actually do sometimes they're better than the composite gaskets all right from underneath let's wiggle this manifold out of here here we go to find the right angle there's the old manifold I'm gonna check from above when I go there but I just want to feel to make sure that this surface here on the pipe doesn't have any raised areas rot buildup anything like that I want to make sure that the gasket is still in good condition obviously you should replace the gasket unfortunately I don't have one so I'm gonna to have to reuse this one it's just one of those ring style gaskets I'll try to show you from up above but basically if if you can feel it that it's more raised than the flat part of the pipe it's going to squish back down when you put the manifold in it's going to seal up and do its job so thankfully mine is good to reuse i'm also going to reuse the manifold gasket to the head like i said before um, but this is 
a nice clean surface ready to go. That's the surface I was talking about and that right there is the gasket. You can see that little ring and that's what I was basically feeling. I know I have my flashlight stuck to it now but if you look right there you can see that little ring, uh, the o-ring gasket. So this is all clean and in good condition ready to reuse. Now let's focus on the head. So kind of hard to see uh, but I still want to show you. I'm going to take a razor blade and scrape off everything that is here. I'm going to do this from above but basically I want to clean off the area. So the way I'm going to clean this is with a razor blade. I'm just going to scrape off all the debris. If you have to, you can use a wire brush as well. Sometimes a wire brush will fit in places better. I just want to remove the corrosion and then uh, I can show you how to extract those two broken studs as well. All right. So, I'm going to show you how to extract this stud right here. For me, it's protruding out quite a bit. Usually when they break, they break flush with the head, and that's going to be a little harder. Still the same process, but a little harder. At this point, you can try an extractor socket, tap it on here. It's got twisty edges in it, and it grabs onto the stud, or the broken piece, and it pulls it right out. Uh, hopefully. It can also backfire on you um, and I've had that happen before where it grabs onto it, you go to twist it and it breaks flush. Uh, you can heat up the head but this is an aluminum head so warm is all I suggest. Heating it up hot is a very bad idea but what I'm gonna try is to weld the nut onto here. Now I have my temperature sensor right here for the um, coolant Mine is broken and I'm going to replace it anyway, so I'm not worried about this getting too hot. But if you are, just put a piece of metal right here to block it, to shield it, to make sure it is not going to, it is not going to get melted. As you can see, mine's also unplugged because it's literally broken, so I'm not worried about that. Obviously, you can unplug it, get all the wiring out of the way, make a shield here to cover this and uh, just protect it from getting damaged, basically. So I'm going to hold the nut with my ground on the welder. That's going to act as pliers, kind of. And then I'm just going to cook it all around, weld it nice and thick to the stud. The heat from it will hopefully also help to break this free. And uh, well, we'll see what happens. I turn the heat up on my welder as well as the wire speed. Hopefully that gives me enough to get this nut welded on here nice and tight. Also, before you do this, make sure you disconnect your negative battery terminal. It's a good idea to do that because you don't want to accidentally fry any uh, electrical components. Okay, let's go for it. All right, let's let this cool down for a minute until it's not cherry red anymore. And then with a socket, I'm going to try and pull it out. Make sure your, your socket is well positioned on there. And looks like so far so good. Just take your time spraying it with rust penetrant at this point. Probably won't help unless you let it cool down more because the rust penetrant is just going to either catch on fire or immediately turn into smoke. Either let it cool down or I suggest just going for it right away while it's hot. That's what usually does the trick. There we go, it's out. Let's give this area a quick cleaning with a wire brush. And at this point, of course, you can reconnect your temperature sensor if yours was in good condition. Again, mine is broken and I will be replacing it. So that's it for that one. As you can see, this one, well, I'm not gonna lie. I tried to use an extractor socket off camera and this is what happened. It's now broken flush with the head. But like I said before, it is the same procedure. Uh, you just take your welder and a nut, cook it right inside there. Obviously the aluminum is not gonna weld itself to the nut. So the heat should help break free. Okay, let's give this one a shot. Okay, I'm gonna grab my socket. 
Let's see what happens. Okay. Yep, I think it's coming out. To be honest, it takes some practice to get the welder settings right to do this kind of stuff. But basically, you wanna turn your heat up or your amperage high enough to where it's more than you would use to t weld something like this if you were to, so to speak, weld them together. Um, but it's not hot enough to where it's gonna burn right through it. So you want it at that limit so it can really penetrate, cook everything, just weld them together strong. And then you wanna puddle up the weld inside so the bolt or the stud can uh, basically become one with the nut all around. Otherwise your nut will just break off when you try to twist it. So, whew, get this out of here, give this a quick cleaning, and then we can install the new manifold. By the way, you always wanna cover up your area when you're welding. I had some more stuff over there covering the carpet, but you don't wanna catch it on fire. So I have a welding blanket here, some uh, scrap metal, we'll call it that, and just whatever you have to do to get the area safe for welding, because this kind of carpet will immediately catch on fire if sparks or slag gets on it. On the new manifold, you'll notice that the EGR plate right here is held on with these studs. Uh, unfortunately, I can't use these for the EGR block off plate because I don't, I don't have EGR like I said before. And what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna use two of these bolts that I had laying around. These studs you can definitely use if you have EGR. It's just that they don't go deep enough and I'd have to stack washers on here to make up for this much space in order to fully tighten this block off plate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove these. I'm gonna keep the lock washers off of them, but I'm gonna thread in my own bolts, which I have cut to size so that they fit. Also I wanna mention right here, this comes with a gasket. This gasket is a flat gasket. As you can see, there's a hole for the EGR in there. This gasket is flat, just like this uh, block off plate. So basically, I'm just gonna snug these down. Nice and tight. And these lock washers will make sure that this does not come back off. Over here, we have to put the studs in that bolt up to the pipe. So I'm gonna thread them on by hand and then you can use a seven millimeter socket or some locking pliers or regular pliers or an adjustable wrench, basically whatever you have. Just use it right here where it has the hex cut out to thread them on nice and tight. But bottom them out by hand first. I'm gonna use my seven millimeter socket and just make sure that these are snug. You don't have to go crazy tight on these because as you bolt this up to the pipe, the nuts will actually want to pull the studs out that way and it'll lock in both sides of the threads. So as long as these are snug, which they are, perfect. The surface is clean, ready for installation. So let's uh, install. And the same way we took it out, let's sneak this new one back in. Make sure any wires that are in your way don't get ripped off, pinched, or damaged. Okay, I'm gonna try and position it into the pipe from down here. It might not work out, so I might have to do it from up top, but I'm gonna try. Looks like it did work. This came with three brand new mounting nuts. I'm gonna bottom them out and then we'll tighten them up. These new bolts are 14 millimeter in size, by the way. Just gonna make sure these are nice and tight. Let's put the gasket in. Like I said, I'm gonna reuse my original gasket. It's still good, and like I said, a lot of times it's better than the composite gaskets because those will disintegrate and then you'll get a leak and then you have to do the job over again. I got one bolt started. 
I'm going to thread it in a couple threads. By the way, I have all new hardware, which I, I always recommend that. Okay. I always recommend new hardware for this because the hardware, like you saw, can break easily and over time it gets weak from all the heat cycles. Uh, so now I'm going to try to put in the next bolt and the gasket hopefully will want to cooperate. That one started. Awesome. All right. For the two all the way at the front, I'm going to go underneath through the fender well, put those in through there. Now that they're all in, I'm going to go ahead and snug these up while I'm here because it's easier with a long extension. We'll start here, we'll bottom them out from the middle and then we'll go to 11 foot pounds from the middle out and then we'll go to 18 foot pounds. So it's got two torque sequences in total. But I want to start in the middle, that way it can seat itself properly. Alright, so there's one. Okay, that one's snugged up. I'm going to re-snug this one because they got loose now. Since I'm here, might as well tighten this one. Then we'll go back to the fender well. And we'll tighten this one over here. That's snug. Then we'll tighten this one since I'm here, and then the last one will be the one closest to the passenger compartment at the back of the engine. Okay, now it's snug. Go back inside. Snug up this one, which is the last one. All right, now we can grab the torque wrench and torque them all. Like I said, 11 foot-pounds in the same sequence, and then 18 foot-pounds will be your last step in the same sequence again. Now we go to 18 foot-pounds, same sequence, and that'll be the last torque. All right, they're all tight. Let's put the spark plug wires back before I put them back. I like to put a little bit of silicone paste or dielectric grease on both ends. This end that goes on the coil actually has some already, so I don't want to add any because then it'll be too much. Uh, so I'm just going to leave this as is, but I will add some here. I'm going to take off the insulating boot and with this insulating boot removed you can just simply add a little bit this is a little much but you get the point just add some dielectric grease what this is going to do is it's going to allow the boot not to get stuck on the spark plug in the future and it's also going to prevent moisture from building up in there creating corrosion and whatnot so put the insulation back on it's very important otherwise your manifold will basically just cook this rubber away and I'm going to start with the easiest one to do. Slide that on all the way until it clicks. Slide this onto the spark plug until it, it clicks. There we go. And now we'll just go down the line and do the rest of them. Sometimes pry bars can be your friend. These other two you can easily get from inside the fender well. have all clicked in. Make sure the wires are not resting right up against the manifold. That would be bad. They will melt. Let's put the cover back on for the engine. It should just slide right in, but of course be careful of any wires that are hanging down. I'm not sure if these were supposed to be uh, tied up here or if someone has added these, but if you have them, make sure they're out of the way. And if you don't, well, don't worry about it. So 
to slide it. Make sure that this rubber seal here doesn't pop off. It can easily fall and then it doesn't make a seal. You get water, potentially exhaust fumes in here. It's not good. So slide it in all the way and make sure that it lines up with its um, points where it clips in. Looks like I have to shift it to the driver's side a little bit. There we go. All right, that just fell into position. Let's latch it on. Just like that. We'll do the same on the bottom here. And of course, the same on the driver's side. Don't forget about this air vent that goes in here. Just slide it in, it has these little pins that kind of help it stay in place. Let's put the cup holder back. It's got four 10 millimeter bolts, line it up. And we'll go ahead and start these in. There are two on the bottom and a little bit harder to see, but there are two on the top here. Let's see if I can start them in like this. Okay, snug them up. Typically you'd have another pocket or a compartment that latches in here. Mine is completely broken off and I don't have it, but obviously if you have yours, go ahead and put it back. Let's put this knee panel on the passenger side. It's got clips along the top that need to slide into these slots here. Okay, and then two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom. That's one. That's two. Same on the driver's side, clips all along the top. And two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on the bottom. Somewhere, here they are. All right, let's put the seats back. Let's bring the seats back and line them up with their corresponding mounting studs. Oops, make sure you don't pinch any wiring. And drop it down. Let's put the nuts on. There's one on each corner. Let's bottom them out. Make sure they're nice and tight. All right. Okay, last one out of the four. Again, there's one on each corner. Make sure they are all nice and tight. All right, let's do the same to the passenger side if you took both seats out. And don't forget about these little covers. Put those back to hide the bolts, or the studs. Last bolt on the passenger side. Again, four on each corner. Make sure they are nice and tight. Okay, this one unfortunately didn't have any little caps for me, but at this point, you can go ahead and turn on the engine, take it for a rope test.